This footage is from the 1944 German training film called Nahkampf mit Waffen, or Close Combat with Weapons. At the end of this video, I'll be showing more, so stick around. It's worth it. Using articles from early 1944 from the periodical series Die Wehrmacht, in two videos I'll be focusing on the second battle for Casino and related subjects. If you'd like to get notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon. You won't be disappointed, I promise. This illustrated relief map shows the lay of the land around Casino and the approximate positioning of the enemy during the second battle for Casino, which took place in February of 1944. To the left, in front of the city Casino, runs street number 6, which leads to Rome. Behind that, Mount Casino and the monastery that was destroyed by the enemy. Farther back behind Mount Casino is Mount Cairo, which is about 2,000 meters high. The Anglo-American forces tried several times to occupy areas to the north and east of Casino City on this mountain. Down the middle is the Tal Van Rapido, or Rapido Valley, which was partially flooded. This is the direction that the enemy thrust to take Casino came from. These are scenes of Casino City after days of intense and often door-to-door -door street fighting. This particular footage is from a Portuguese source. This is Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, meeting with General Richard Heydrich, the commander of the 1st Fallschirmjäger, or Paratrooper Division. It's interesting to see that this notice was issued by the so-called Straßenkommandant, or Street Commander. The first phase of the battle was highlighted by intense artillery duels. The Americans had a heavy superiority in firepower, which they had hoped would compel the Germans to withdraw their forces from the casino area. They also enjoyed air superiority. This is captured footage of American artillery gun crews in action during the battle. The Germans, however, understood that losing Casino would leave Rome vulnerable to the Anglo-American advance, which would have to be avoided at all costs. This is a heavy Nebelwerfer, or rocket launcher, that has just been loaded. Notice the interesting camouflage pattern that it has been painted with. This nice photograph shows a frontal view of a Werfer with rockets loaded and ready to fire. The Germans had the advantage of being well dug in, and the mountainous terrain provided excellent, elevated and unobstructed lines of sight for their artillery spotters, who could call in predetermined coordinates to their artillery batteries. They were able to quickly target groups of assault troops that had been gathering for attacks with devastating pinpoint accuracy. Many of these crews had seen extensive combat on the Eastern Front and so were generally more experienced than their Anglo-American counterparts. In 1943, the Germans had made a public commitment not to place military personnel inside the monastery, but as the casualties mounted, frustrated American leaders began to believe that it was in fact occupied, at least by artillery spotters, 
and so they decided to bomb it. This footage is from the bombing raid. The monastery was destroyed, but the Germans were not intimidated. Rather than withdrawing, the German 1st Fallschirmjäger Division immediately occupied the rubble of the destroyed monastery, which proved to be an excellent defensive position. On February 8th, the Americans began a third and final assault on Casino Town and Monastery Hill. In the town, intense street fighting broke out, resulting in heavy casualties being taken by both sides. Here is more Anglo-American footage that was taken during that fighting. This is the American general, Mark W. Clark. I'll be uploading the second video soon, so remember to subscribe to the channel. And now, here is more of the close combat with weapons training film that I promised. If you are a Patreon channel member, you'll receive a link to an additional clip. If you're not yet a member, please consider becoming one. Entladen, entspannen. Lauf frei. Entladen, entspannt. Sicherheit vorhanden, Herr Oberleutnant. Eintreten, Marsch, Marsch. Wie ich es eben von Brauer gesehen habe, können wir nicht üben. Ein ganzes Magazin herausjagen in der Hoffnung, dass ein Schuss schon treffen wird, ist Unsinn. Wir müssen mit den Maschinenwaffen genauso zielen wie mit dem Gewehr. Jeder Schuss muss ein Treffer sein. Die Munitionstaktik, die an der Front lebenswichtig ist, muss auch hier beim Üben beachtet werden. Ein MP. Auf mittlere Entfernung schießen wir mit der MP mit Schulteranschlag. Linkes Bein vor, einstemmen und beide Knie durchdrücken. MP von vorn in die Schulter einziehen, zielen und Feuerstöße von drei bis sechs Schuss abgeben. Beim Einbruch gegen plötzlich auftauchenden Feind im Wald-, Orts- und Grabenkampf sowie bei Nacht schießen wir von 30 Meter abwärts aus der Hüfte. Linke Hand am Magazinhalter, rechte Hand am Griffstück, die ausgeschwenkte Schulterstütze fest an den Körper gepresst, Zeigefinger am Abzug. Und wie zielen wir Stamm? Wir visieren über den Lauf und verbessern die Schussrichtung nach der Garbe. Richtig! Und so schießen wir im Sturm ohne Halt. Wenn es die Lage erlaubt, ist es aber besser, bei der Abgabe des Schusses kurz zu verhalten. Dadurch erreichen wir eine größere Treffsicherheit, wie beim MG oder beim Gewehr. Mit der MP44 ist dem deutschen Infanteristen die beste und gefürchtetste Nahkampfwaffe in die Hand gegeben. Es wird mit ihr genauso gekämpft wie mit der MP40. 